Bramboro back with Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. It's August 1892, and war has erupted in Europe. It's not quite a general war, but close to it. Two separate wars going on. Britain is fighting Germany and Austria. Separately, Britain is fighting us. So there's an Anglo-German slash Austrian war going on, and there's also an Anglo-French war going on. The Anglo-German war has been going uh, two months, and ours has been going one month. Neither of them going particularly well for Britain in the early going. As uh, Germany and Austria have are apparently done a little bit more damage to Britain than the reverse. 21,000 to 17,000 victory points. <clears throat> and we've only had one small battle so far, the opening shots of the war. So we're slightly ahead. And i got to say that uh, it was a shockingly short battle um, and calls into question what design flaws there may be in the British light cruisers. Hopefully that trend continues with their heavy cruisers and battleships as well. Uh, that thing flooded very quickly after just a few hits. However, we've got our work cut out for us uh, for the remainder of this opening month of the war. We have two convoys under attack. And frankly, their defenders are a little outgunned, at least in terms of ship tonnage. We have a couple light cruisers and some torpedo boats defending against two British heavy cruisers in the Bay of Biscay. And down here in the West Med, just off of Marseille, we've got three heavy cruisers and some more torpedo boats against a British, ba uh, British battleship with a light cruiser escort. So these battles are fairly important, not just because of the warships involved, but if we lose one or both of these battles, I think we're going to lose a fair number of transports. These are fairly large. One is a 10 transport convoy and one is a 6 transport convoy. All right. I think the game plan is going to be to try to send our three torpedo boats in here and score some torpedo hits on the lead heavy cruiser. Whereupon they'll probably be destroyed and hope that we can keep up a rate of fire, a volume of fire, with our smaller but faster firing guns to burn these heavy cruisers down. They might do the same to us. They have quite a few 4.2 inch guns. Let's hop in and see what happens. And there we go. First cruiser sighted. Let's angle off a little bit so we can get more guns to bear. Okay, let's get these torpedo boats zooming in there. Let's try to increase the accuracy of our light cruisers as much as we can. So I'm going to bring them down to cruise speed. Torpedo boats cannot <clears throat> smoke up. Actually, it's cut behind a stern. That might give us a better shot. Let's 
Blue torpedo save. Well, okay. T5 is already out of the fight. better shot at this cruiser. Torpedoes away. Boom! That looks pretty good. Okay, T1, get the hell out of here. <laughs> I don't want him firing. He's already put torpedoes into Aurora. And it looks like T5, uh, T1 may be in trouble there. No, Undaunted is flooding as well under gunfire from the two light cruisers. Okay, it looks like T1 and T3 got saved by the bell there. <laughs> Flooded quick. Okay, I thought Undaunted was going to sink there. Uh, T3. Can you move at all? Is he bugged? All right, well. I don't know why that these TVs aren't moving at all. Let's slow this down a little bit. Okay, we scored 59 hits. 40 hits for almost 3,500 damage from the 4.9s on the light cruisers. Goodness, they, they tore up that heavy cruiser almost as fast as Nieli uh, sank the British light cruiser in the previous battle. I think one sunk and a couple of banged up torpedo boats is a more than acceptable price for two sunk heavy cruisers. That worked out well. All right. What have we here? Palestro, Tenant, and uh, Valdec Rousseau against Queen Elizabeth. We've got some torpedo boat escorts. And Queen Elizabeth has a light cruiser. Now, these are newer cruisers. I don't know what their uh, crew statuses. Okay, trained, trained, and trained. Right. And the two British ships are at trained as well. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if I want to suicide these torpedo boats right into Queen Elizabeth. Let's just see how the heavy cruisers do with their 6.7 inch guns in the initial going. Okay, well so much for that earlier plan. The cruisers all, <laughs> all tied up in the middle of the transports. Um, so yeah, right at the beginning, the, the transport just turned right across the bow of Palestro, and so they're trying to get clear of the merchants. Meanwhile, yeah, torpedo boats right in here on the just sighted Queen Elizabeth. I don't think we've sighted the light cruiser yet. Let's have a look at uh, the British battleship. 11.8 inch guns. Bunch of 4.5s. Looks like there's some 6.5s. Some five, she's got quite a few guns on her. I 
Ah, uh, there's the light cruiser. Let's see if our own light or uh, heavy cruisers are free. Not quite yet. I think she can cut behind the. I think by the time she makes this turn, she should be able to cut behind the stern of magenta there. Torpedo boats are headed in the correct direction. Come on, T9. Let's get in a little closer. Make sure we've got a decent geometry. out. T-18. I don't know, we're in a tail chase now, even though I'm sure we've got a much 17.6 knot. we got a 10 knot advantage, but a tail chase means a low closure rate regardless. Avoid. Shit. Try to get off torps if you can. Not looking good. T18 going down. Yeah. And they flip those uh goodness okay this is this isn't going very well <laughs> still not going very well all right Let's just bug these. Uh... Oh, I can't tell which. Okay, this one. Let's bug these torpedo boats out of here. And T23. If I can find you, where are you? There you are. Falling behind these guys, get these torpedo boats out of here. If possible. Okay, I think it's up to the heavy cruisers who are still in kind of. They are in kind of a strange formation here. Wall deck is. Uh, Supposed to be last in line, but is not. <laughs> okay, at least Queen Elizabeth is in range. She has taken some damage. Oh. From the 4.9s on the torpedo boats, at least they did a little bit of damage to her. And started some fires. Okay. And these torpedo boats are just... You know what? Just, just retreat. <laughs> Okay, we need to get fairly close in order for our 6.7s and 3.7s to have much of a shot, but of course they're going to be coming under the fairly uh, robust firepower of the battleship, which 
It should be robust. It's a battleship. Okay. She has taken some structural damage. She's got quite a few fires on her. Switch everybody to HE. Kind of thinking fire is probably our best chance. What is the superstructure armor in Queen Elizabeth? Yeah, less than an inch. That's that's our best shot. Try to get uh, crew losses and or fire. Oh my goodness, what are you guys doing? I see. Palestro has taken some propulsion damage and therefore is not the division leader anymore. Okay, Queen Elizabeth is getting worn down. She's down to 70% structure and a lot of fires going. She's also uh, lost 10%, over 10% of her crew. Down to 15 knots, and Tonant has lost. <sighs> Come on. I know this game is still in early access. That said, it's been in early access for a long time. It seems to me it shouldn't be that terribly difficult to code AI ships to maintain some semblance of a formation. That maybe it is but also frustrating is ship's behavior and formations is something that players have repeatedly, repeatedly um, mentioned for years. And I don't know why they haven't, it doesn't seem to me that they've made any attempt to uh, do anything about it. Okay, I'm off of that. Queen Elizabeth is down to 59% structure. And we've gotten banged up, but not too bad. We're just slowed down, so I don't know if we're going to have much of a shot at catching Queen Elizabeth, who herself is slowed down. She's going 15 knots, but we're only making... Well, about, about the same on average. Although she's turning toward us, that's not a bad thing. I mean, it means she can fire more guns at us, but it also means we should be able to close the distance. And I think we need to close the distance a little bit. Oh, well, she just scored a big hit on uh, wall deck. Which 
which means palestro is now the division leader again. <laughs> They're taking turns. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to turn out. I think our hit rate should increase again as we get a little bit closer. That battleship does not have torpedoes, neither do our heavy cruisers. So this is going to remain a gunfight, at least until that light cruiser comes close. Which I don't even see fire coming from the light cruiser now. So looks like she beat feet. to 51% structure on Queen Elizabeth. Oh, we're getting close now. Hopefully that means we start scoring some more hits, but of course he's going to start scoring some more hits too. Queen Elizabeth down to 17.5% okay, crew losses. A lot of fires forward on Queen Elizabeth. Okay, she's lost her forward tower. That's going to significantly degrade her accuracy all of these ranges. <laughs> I don't know how much that matters. Police are up here duking it out with her. Detach wall deck. I'm going to tell her to retreat. Hey, Queen Elizabeth is taking some significant damage now. 25% fires raging, stem to stern, 28.8% crew losses and climbing. There she goes, extensive fire. Nice job, heavy cruisers. Okay. Well, okay, let's get let's turn back around and let's uh, finish off this light. The Barracuda. I think we can switch everybody back to auto. Okay, let's stay outside Torp range. We're at uh, 2.5 kilometers. I think that's probably fine. We never got a, a chance really to look at the light cruiser to look at superb in the earlier battle. Okay. Forward and aft, port and starboard underwater torpedo tubes. I think that's pretty standard for 1890 light cruiser. She has apparently lost, she's only taken some propulsion damage, not three levels of it, but she is at zero knot. She's dead in the water. Many bulkheads 
I wonder if this is a different class. Superb only had standard. Nice job to the auto designer for less than 1% longitudinal weight offset. That's good. Um, Palestro has taken some more propulsion damage, so it's Tonant's turn. <laughs> to take division lead. All three cruisers, uh, you know, have now taken two turns as the division lead. Boom! That was a huge hit right there. Penetration for flooding, that may put Barracuda down. She's almost, yeah, she's almost gone. One percent, there she goes. Okay, well these three cruises got banged up pretty good and we lost a passel of uh, torpedo boats. But we've sunk a British battleship and I think that that is an acceptable outcome. Britain did score almost a thousand victory points but 2600 for the French Navy. And two convoys successfully defended I think we're off to a pretty good, uh, an auspicious start to this war. Let's press on into September 1892. So somehow Britain is buddying up with Italy in both the East and West men. Yeah, okay. And we've got quite a few, <coughs> quite a few. Uh, battles here and this one is pretty enormous one of our task forces uh, Brennus and I'm just going to say Valarus along with their heavy cruiser, heavy cruiser escort up against six count them six <laughs> Uh, British battleships, a whole passel of, oh my gosh, all the, <laughs> looks like all the British heavy cruisers. And yeah, I don't, I don't care how technologically superior our designs might be. That ain't, that ain't, no, I'm not doing that. The problem is, I don't know if we're going to be able to get out of this. Our ships are 18 knots. There's, there's. Their battleships are slower. Our cruisers are 20 non, 21 knots, about the same as theirs, but they got all these light cruisers, which are also only 21 knots. Oh my good, oh my goodness. I don't know if we're gonna be able to withdraw from this, but I'm going to try. This. Meanwhile, failure. We are a tiny bit faster, tiny bit faster. The only thing that can close on us are the torpedo boats. And I'm fairly confident that we should be able to bang up torpedo boats. So I am going to go into this battle and I'm going to try to run. This is not the right situation to commit our few ships. It just isn't. Okay, so the task force successfully extricated, uh, did not sight the British ships. We were able to uh, get turned around and fast enough to disengage. What's interesting though, there were six British battleships present. Most of them are the Marlborough class, and there was one Vanguard. It's the Vanguard that has the 11.8 inch guns that we saw in the last battle. There's only one Vanguard. The other five are Marlboro. They've only got 10.5 inch guns. And it kind of looks like that's the more numerous of the British designs. So that's good to know. Okay, we've got another obligatory battle here. And in this case, we have two battleships and four heavy cruisers against three battleships and two lights. 
think this is more our speed. Let's go ahead and fight this one and see how our single 11.9s do against their dual 11.8s. I think all three of these are the vanguards. All right, well that didn't take long. They are right there. Okay, so let's get the let's get the battle line, to, the two battleship battle line. Let's get them turned this way, and uh, let's go ahead and slow them down to cruise for increased accuracy, which is only 15 knots. Gulp. Okay, and let's keep the heavies at their top speed of 21 knots, and we'll try to get the heavies in between their BBs and ours. Try to turn them enough so that uh, Both the fore and aft turrets can be brought to bear. Let's make sure that both of the battleships are focusing and stay focused on this lead. Oh my goodness. turning the collision avoidance off on both of it because if anything they seem to do better with it off at least in terms of being responsive to going where the heck I want them to go okay now let's get the, the cruiser going this way let's get these guys angled away if we can I think I'd actually prefer the, let's get the heavy cruisers to take out these light cruisers first, just to lessen the incoming uh, smaller caliber fire, which is actually pretty deadly. <laughs> okay, that looks alright. India has taken a little bit of structural damage, not a whole lot so far. Just have there and steady up there. <clears throat> okay, Bjorn's been kind of, or rather, who is that? Hermes has been kind of, that's a kind of a mission kill. Cruiser, switch fire to Empress of India. Everybody on Empress of India. Cruiser, slow to cruise speed, increased accuracy, uh, plus I don't want you running right up the stern of the battleships. Battleships, let's go ahead and execute a reverse turn here. Oh, Empress of India is getting banged up now. That's a, that's a good development. Lots of fires, got some forward flooding, four towers out. Cruisers, shift fire to cannabis. because she's closer. <laughs> yeah. I'd 
like to see Empress of India finished off, but I think we need to shift all our fire onto Canopus for now. Follow the battleships if you can. Okay, Canopus is about done. Nice. Empress of India is certainly banged up. Where is Vanguard is the third British battleship? Okay, Cannabis down. Empress of India is banged up enough where I don't she's I don't think her accuracy is gonna be hardly any good at all. Yeah, 3.5% accuracy. Let's uh, let's work on Vanguard here. Cruisers. Work on Vanguard. Actually, no. Let's have the cruisers finish off Empress of India. I think I like that idea better. These three cruisers. Jamap is working with the battleships now. Helping out against Vanguard. That's a pretty impressive uh, accuracy, but that's because she's firing at uh, Tarot, who is not doing very well. That's to be expected, probably, at that range. She missed with that shot, though. That's good. Vanguard's starting to get banged up pretty good, though. Taking a lot of damage from our. That's not right. We don't have 11.8 inch. It looks like, even though it's damage received, it reflects the caliber of the owned ship's uh, caliber. So that number there, 1668, is probably correct, but that caliber is not. If you look at our damage dealt, well, it doesn't show decimal points at all. Go ahead and finish off Vanguard here with our battleships. What's our cruisers doing? Is Tro going to make it out of here? I don't know. She's basically tanking damage. Tanking, tanking the damage. <laughs> Quite a few fires going on Empress of India. Guys getting banged up, but not as badly as those British battleships are. Only scored. 16 hits with our 11.9s over this entire battle, but they've done 70, almost 7,700 damage. Boy, the 3.9s are 
are doing a number on the enemy. And there's a lot of three, there's 3.9s on the cruisers too. That's not all battleship secondaries. Don't have a good angle on Vanguard. I'm going to detach to row. Tell her to retreat if she can. Still want her firing at uh, Empress of India on the way out. Go ahead and get Division 1 to finish off Curlew since she's parading herself right in front of us. Let's get her taken care of. Like that. <laughs> Boom! First shot, too, with the mains. Propulsion damage, structural damage. She's going to start taking some. Eh, it's only a little bit of flooding. More flooding. Yeah, Curlew is not long for this world. Curlew down. Okay. Let's get Div 1 back on Vanguard, which they were doing anyway, but let's designate the target so they keep firing at her. So sw swap into something else. You know, same thing. Since, since Hermes is not smoked up right now, let's go ahead and shift fire to her with the two heavy cruisers, Colbert and Leon. Leon Gambetta. A big smack. Hermes is just about to flood out. Okay, my cruisers are taken care of. Cruiser division is back on Empress of India. Vanguard. Vanguard is barely hanging in there. Vanguard down. Everyone on Empress of India. I think that's a fine outcome. I think two, th three battleships lost may be enough for the uh, British government to send out a peace feeler. May. Let's have a closer look here. So this is the Vanguard. No, this one is a, yeah, they're all three Vanguard class. Standard bulkheads, spacious crew quarters, big crew, 19.7 longitudinal weight offset. That's not terrible compared to...
<laughs> what has often been seen from the auto design before, it ain't great either. That's affecting their accuracy. I'm telling you, that weak superstructure hurts. That's where a lot of those fires are coming from. It's where those uh, control towers being red as you know. Of course, all of these are probably very similar to what we have with 1890s tech, as far as all these components. It's pretty much DIW. Yeah, less than two knots, yeah. Ah, oh, that was it. A shot coming in from Bear. Okay, light damage to most of our ships here, medium damage to Tarot, but we didn't lose any. And uh, Britain's down a total of four battleships now. 7,400, almost 7,500 victory points for us, and just a hair over 100 for John Bull. Okay, this is another obligatory battle. This is a port defense. Enemy is threatening Le Havre. We should stop them or they will surely start bombarding the shore. I think that their ships have proven prone enough to flooding that we're, we're going to take a... We're, I'm going to take a try at this. This might backfire. Okay, we just dropped to X5 time compression. That means that they see up. Uh, there they are. It's pretty close. Ow! The, oh, Forbon just got schwacked. That is probably, that's probably the heavy cruiser right there. Nope, heavy cruiser is there. It's a dang torpedo boat. worried about the torpedo boat. <clears throat> Maybe I should be. Let's get these guys firing at what I think is the heavy cruiser. Yeah, Forbon is not doing well. Let's see if uh, T3 can get in here. I'm not sure we've had any torpedo boats actually manage a successful <laughs> torpedo attack yet in any of these battles. We're going to have to wait for destroyers. There's a nice hit. A 4.9 inch hit on uh, this heavy cruiser. Get torpedoes on save. Uh oh. It's 
put him in a turn, make it a little bit harder to hit. I don't know if those torpedo launchers are going to get turned around, though. That may have been a bad idea. Can we get torpedoes off? There's one. Oh, they're going to miss. Oh, they're both going to miss. Ah! Ah! T3. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I think we need to get these guys slowed down a little bit. Well, Abakir has been uh, banged up pretty badly. Ammo debt, okay. That's going a little bit better, and our uh, Abakir is gone. Okay, let's clean up these torpedo boats. They're too close. That's a light cruiser. Oh, four bond is about. Oh, four bond is gone. Okay, okay. Well, you know what? We, we got a heavy cruiser. Let's uh, let's try to get uh, Gishin out of here. Smoke up. She may not be able to get out of here. Oh, High Flyer is uh, almost down too. Maybe I'm running a little prematurely here. Okay, high flyers down. Uh, there is only one like. No, okay. I think these are just torpedo boats left. No, that's got to be a light cruiser because TBs cannot smoke. I think there is one light cruiser and three torpedo boats remaining, I think. There we go. Don't really want to come within torpedo range because, frankly, uh, the AI are better at shooting and <laughs> avoiding torpedoes than uh, the player. Well, me, anyway. <laughs> I think we'll overcome her with gunfire just fine. Yeah, she's flooding hard. Black Prince. Shooting a black prince. Black prince. Flooded out. Gone. Okay. Boom. That was a big hit on contest. Of course, they've scored a pretty nice hit on me as well. Yeah, that ought to take contest out right there. At the very least, she's basically a mission kill. Okay. HMS question mark just sank. <laughs> We're going to afford to slow down a little bit for accuracy's sake. The cruise speed. Spiteful. Next target. Reacquired, rather. This 
rifle's not in great shape. And actually her guns are knocked out. She can't shoot back. She does still have torpedoes though. So we don't want to come too close to her. That ought to finish her up. Spiteful down. Okay. Yeah. One torpedo boat remaining. Yeah. And she may be running away. Let's speed back up as much as we can. Which is only another knot. I don't know if this remaining torpedo boat has been damaged yet or not. Okay, well, that was not one-sided by any stretch. Uh, we came out ahead, but definitely took some losses. We lost one of our light cruisers and our torpedo boat. Uh, of course, they lost all three of their cruisers and three out of their four torpedo boats. Almost 1,000 VP for the Brits, but 2,500 for us. A little bit of a bloodletting there. However, La Havre is safe. Okay, so we lost six transports in the English Channel, but the Brits lost four in the Eastern Med. So... September 1892 turned out to be a pretty eventful month in the Anglo-French War at Sea. Let's have a look at where we where the navies stand. 109, we're down to 119 ships. That's far fewer than they had a month ago. Uh, 31 of which are repairing, so they're below 100 for operational strength. We can't claim to be too much better. Um, 42, well, we've got five repairing, so we have 37 ships operational. 18 building. Britain is building none. That may change in the next month in response to these losses. How is Germany doing? 83 ships, but about half of them are under repair. She's not building very many either. So we've got roughly 40-ish a little bit below 40 ships active. Germany has got about the same number operational. So our combined strength, not in the shipyards, is getting to be roughly in the same ballpark as Britain's. And that is going to do it for this episode. If you like what we're doing with the channel, then leave a like, leave a comment, maybe even subscribe. If you're new to the channel, new to the series, want to catch uh, the other episodes in this series, I'm linking the playlist here. At any rate, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it.